All right, welcome to video four of the Adventures in CRE Hotel Acquisition Model. Um, today we're going to review the um, F&B Offering tab. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this tab. It's got a lot of functionality. You can do everything from just a quick back of the envelope, and, or you can really get into the weeds of the F&B operations. Um, let's start off by doing a high-level overview, and then we can go through each section. So on the left-hand side, we have all of our inputs, um, and it's broken down really into two major sections. We have our F&B revenue inputs and our F&B expensive inputs. And within the revenue inputs, we have um, our F&B offerings. Here's where we can just uh, you know, name it. So if you have a different hotel deal with different F&B offerings, you can rename these to whatever you want. Um, we put in our average guest per occupied room. And then we ask the question, what percentage of occupied rooms use the F&B offerings? And we'll get into how this all works in a little bit. Um, below that, we have the number of non-hotel guests that use F&B offerings. And then we have the average check size per person. And so down below, we have our F&B expense breakouts. And so to the right here, so in this top box, we have the ability to analyze each of these F&B offerings individually. So using cell N5, you have a drop down here, and it's basically reading um, cells F6 to J6. So for example, let's say we want to look at the restaurant. This will update, and we can analyze the restaurant in isolation or any of the other F&B offerings in isolation. Um, below that, we have our total F&B revenue. That way, we can just look at everything as a whole rather than having to go back to the operating cash flow statement to see how it looks. Um, so we have the revenue, we have the F&B expenses, and then we have the expense um, to revenue ratio below. Okay, so that's the overview. Now let's get into a, a bit more of the details of each of these sections. All right, so starting back at the top, we have our F&B offerings where we can name them, and this will flow through to the um, operating cash flow summary. So for example, let's just update room service real quick. I'm just going to type hello. You'll notice that um, room service is updated to hello and all the corresponding cells. And so below that, we have our average guest per occupied room, and this helps us calculate our total guests which helps us accurately calculate our revenue assumptions. Um, as you can see here in Q7, we have our total room nights multiplied by our average guests per occupied room. All right, and so below we ask the question, what percentage of the occupied rooms use the F&B offerings? And you can either use a um, simple projection where you basically project the percentage of occupied rooms that use each F&B offering by meal. And this will stay the same throughout the entire whole period. So from 2019 to 2029, for example, um, the room service or the percentage of occupied rooms that use um, room service for breakfast will be 5% for the entire whole period. Now, you also have the ability um, to alter the percentage of occupied rooms that use each F&B offering for breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, by year. So if you open up, uh, if you click on cell E14, you'll notice that um, this whole section opens up. And you'll notice that for breakfasts, um, we'll, we'll continue with room service as the example. You have the ability to adjust um, the percentage of occupied rooms use F&B offerings um, every year. So for example, let's go to um, 2025 and let's change this to room service so we know that we're looking at room service. Um, and let's, let's say that for breakfast in 2025, just for purpose of example, 50% of the rooms use uh, breakfast or will 50% of the occupied rooms will take advantage of room service for breakfast. So you'll notice in 2025, we have 50% of um, the occupied rooms using that service. So you'll see the number dramatically increase here in cell uh, W10. All right, so let's um, put this back to simple. 
and let's uh, move down. So the next question um, that is asked is, what's the number of non-hotel guests that use F&B per year? So like the previous section, um, we have the option to do a simple version or by year. And in the simple version, you simply put in one um, number for the number of non-guests per year for each of the F&B offerings. So for room service, we have zero. For the bar and restaurant, we're saying 7,300. For the banquet, we're saying 3,750. Um, if you want to do a more detailed scenario uh, by year, you'll simply click by year, and then you can alter the, um, the number of non-hotel guests that use the F&B offerings um, by year and in detail. So let's close that up and let's move down. And then here we're saying, what is the percent of non-guest split per meal? So here for the bar, we're saying 25% of the non-guests that come in are here for lunch and then the remainder are for dinner and later. And this is the same for each of the other options. And below in row 87, we have an error check. This is, you know, just in case you go over 100%, you want to make sure that maybe we should open this up a little bit. Just want to make sure that this is equaling to 100%. So this will turn red and it'll say error must equal 100%. And the same should happen if we're not at 100% as well. Yep. Okay, so that is the number of non hotel guests per year. And so let's move on to the last um, component of the FNB revenue inputs. And this is just the average check size per person. And here you'll just put in the average check size per person for year one, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for each of the F&B offerings. And then finally, um, you will pick an annual growth rate for um, the average check size. And here we're using 3% across the board. And that is it for the F&B revenue inputs. So let's keep going. We'll do the F&B expense inputs. So the expense inputs are based off of um, the percent of revenue jet generated. So in the simple version, you just put in one um, percentage rate that will um, calculate for all of the expenses. That's the simple version. And then you can do the detailed line items version where you can break it out into details. So credit card fees, payroll, cost of goods sold, os and &E, and some other options here. Um, so if you want to really get into the weeds of of the expenses, you'll have the ability to do that here. So again, you have the simple version, you have the detailed line items version. And then below that, you have the option to um, control costs on a yearly basis. So you can get into more detail. So if you have, uh, you know, in, in year one, we have 95% uh, for room service. There's, uh, you know, the expenses are 95% of the revenue. So, you know, we might say, hey, we're looking to control this as we go forward. So let's, let's control costs yearly in the pro forma. And our goal is to bring costs down uh, to 90% from 95. So then you can just do that over time over each of the years. So that is um, really all the inputs on the F&B tab. And so moving over, we already went through um, what this cell does, N5. You're able to individually analyze each of your F&B options. And then, as we said before, you have your total F&B revenue and F&B expenses and the expense to revenue uh, percents. And that is it for the F&B tab. So um, the next video, we will go over um, the other operating departments tab. Thanks for watching. See you next video.